Hey, good day. It's Tourism Tim here with another exciting episode of Tourism Marketing TV. And today I'm honored to have on one of the leaders, the princess of travel and media and goodwill around the world, Sandy Duvetter. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Tim. I like that word princess. That's, that connotates some really wonderful... Mm. Adjectives. And absolutely, people. absolutely. We're 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 young at heart, and and, and we're 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 trying to uh, to uh, model good behavior, right? Right. Well, I like it better than the old queen. So that's, that's right. I, I I I thought about that before I said that. Anyway, I am honored to have you on the show today, and we're going to cover a lot of stuff. Let me do a quick intro. I'm going to use my notes here because there's so many good things. But I think one of the things that I wanted to share um, was that I met you. Gosh, probably. 10, 15 years ago at a trade show, and I've always admired uh, the work that you're doing, um, not only in the travel industry, but to help people all over the world. And um, I wanted to, to acknowledge your, um, that you're the global ambassador for the International Women's Fair in, in uh, Africa. Um, you're the, also the host and the founder of Travel Talk Radio, Business Travel Radio, uh, Celestial Link, Travel Talk Media. Uh, we used to be neighbors down in, in San Diego, and now we both decided to get the heck out of Southern California and move to Northern California. Uh, you've had countless awards. You've been involved with marketing efforts from the San Diego Super Bowl to um, uh, the tourism boards for Tanzania, Aruba, Egypt. Um, you've, I mean, you've, what can I say? You've done it all, and it's, I, so I'm just so honored to be with you today. Thank you. Well, it's great to be with you, and your work is really significant too, Tim. So thank you for for allowing us to share our views too. Very good. Well, you know, it's I've always felt that we're always in, we're all in this together, and no matter how big you are or how small you are, the issues that we face on on letting people know that the the our what we have to offer in our service or our destination, um, effectively marketing that to people and getting them to come. Um, enhances quality of life when we do our job well, uh, increases economic development, and uh, hope, and we get to do what we love, get paid to do what we love. So we that's do. always fun. We do, we do which, which is wonderful, and, and it actually makes a difference in the world. I mean, when you think about tourism, it's much more than hamburgers and, and heads and beds. It's, it's about changing, exchanging cultures, extending your hand in friendship, taking care of the environment, and ultimately, you know, celebrating the diversity. It's just... It's a great, it's a great industry. It is, and it and it's one of the major economic drivers in the world. And no matter if things are a bit, have been a bit challenged, it's still forecast, and I think it always will be uh, a major economic driver because um, uh, people have a a real desire to see and experience those other cultures, to exchange ideas, and uh, everybody wins. So it's 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 a blessing to be a part of this industry. Well, it's interesting. I mean, when we look at the numbers, we include in the numbers, and sometimes we borrow from other industries, but we include the taxi cab drivers, the restaurateurs, the, the, the hostesses, the people who work in, in, in uh, hotels and resorts. So that's a large, large number of the population around the world. So we are very significant. And it, I wanted to, we're going to start, jump into this interview, and we're going to cover two different parts here. So I just want to let the viewers know that uh, the first part is going to be focused pretty much, pretty much for the people who are already involved in the tourism industry, whether you are that cab driver or the owner of the resort, or maybe you're, you're working at a uh, destination marketing organization. And then the second part, we're going to get into um, the career aspect, because really for every owner of their business, there's got to be a thousand people on average that work in the industry, whether directly or in those support positions you just mentioned. And um, I, I know you probably feel the same way. I think it's a great industry and it's, I'm never bored. There's always something exciting happening. And uh, so um, I'm thrilled that you and I get to share um, our insights and help people uh, make a living doing what they love. Beautiful. Well, let's go for it. All right, let's jump right in. So, um, under the the concept of marketing and promotion for tourism professionals, what are some of the top uh, tourism marketing promotion or branding um, strategies that you're seeing in the world today? What would you recommend for others to make sure they're doing? Well, you know, branding is a very interesting concept. First of all, it's really how people perceive you when they first look at your at your 
logo, at your signage, at your vehicles, at your resort, whatever that is. But it's a brand that people come to know by just looking at the visuals. They go to it by, they know what they're going to feel. They know that there is a consistent thing that they're going to get every time they come to you for whatever that is. And that's your brand. And that's what you have to pay attention to the very first is, is your brand consistent? Is your brand of the highest quality? And once you get that brand in a place that is that you're very proud of, then it's all about, of course, visibility. And we all know that visibility is the new dollar. I mean, that is the new uh, way to uh, use dollars in a way that really do multiply. And when we talk about visibility, it really and truly is the new way of of creating dollars for you in your um, in your field. And what I mean to I what I mean by that actually is the fact that making media your friend is really, really important. And there are a lot of ways to do that. And since we are in media, that's a place where I feel like I can offer a lot of um, just an opportunity and some recommendations. And certainly if you're a, a regional shop or you're just or you're reaching out globally, uh, there are media members that are going to be very excited to know you. But more importantly, it's important to get your media in line because bad things happen in good places. And when they do, you want media to be there to help you round about the good stories. So it's important to have good stories in your back pocket, which means credibility, things that you do in the community that help out. Uh, let's say you you even foster a, um, um, a, a small um, baseball team for children, uh, or you go and you give part of your uh, for prizes, donations, some of the inventory, products, services, whatever you offer. And then you write press releases about it. And so you consistently have those kinds of things there so that when something does happen that might give you some um, uh, negative uh, visibility, you're there with your team of media that you know. And by the way, take your media out to lunch. Uh, take the person who writes a travel column, ask them over. Uh, they love to eat. And uh, I think that's one way, too, that you can you can break some... Uh, 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 ground. That's an excellent point, Sandy. In light of what's been happening in the last year with uh, social and political unrest, uh, it's not a matter of, or, or natural disasters. It's not a matter of uh, if things are going to happen. Chances are something's going to happen. And I couldn't agree with you more. The uh, wisdom of having all that good PR available uh, and letting people know because um, you and I have seen tourism cycle up and down through these natural disasters and these political things and and things happen but the smart destinations and operators who are like you say active with the media and encouraging people to come back um, things do Mexico is a great example I mean they've had some real challenges down there and yet um, I don't know what the stats are, but you probably do, but their tourism continues to rise and rise. And, and um, I saw that they were putting their new uh, tourism, uh, their director of tourism, putting all their money into medium, specifically social media. Well, and that's the other aspect of it is is really taking advantage of the new ways to to network and and networking is very important. I mean, uh, even social media like LinkedIn is fabulous for the tour operator, for the product uh, manager, for the person who's actually coming on board. Great place to get. In fact, we do a lot of that on Twitter, Facebook. We find a lot of great content, and and really and truly, that's what you have to find out is what are what are the pieces that you really need. For our business, we have four things. We need content, uh, we need credibility, uh, we need distribution, and we need sponsors. And it's really going to be that same kind of thing that people are going to need in their own businesses, too. So you have to look at those things and look to see how you can feed into that. Certainly, the world is offering more and more and more opportunities. I mean, the, the noise out there, the competition is huge. Uh, when we talk about tour operators, it's, it's no longer, well, a tour operator, the tour operator can be focusing in multi, multi facets of our industry. So there's, it, it, it's, it's a curse and yet it's a blessing because there's so much out there that you can grab onto, but yet where do you go to grab onto it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, at the good good thing is that the, some, someone's always got, always going to be on top of page one or is going to be featured in the media, and I figure why not you? And, exactly. And, and, and so and so and it's and it's not 
rocket science, as you say, you know, there's there's certain steps that you should be actively engaged with. PR, uh, credibility, I think, is a key thing. I've always been harping on that. That that's key. And and uh, I've got this thing I call the uh, three precepts of all adventure travel prospects. Before they 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 call you up or or give you money for a booking, they want to know that someone went before them, had a good time, nobody died. Mm, meaning good point. meaning you, good that's, point. You, you're experienced, you run good trips, and safety, a top concern. Right. And you're, you're right, Tim. And, you know, I think, too, what, what tour operators have to understand is repeat business is gold. And how do you get repeat business? Your team is going to get you that repeat business. And that's why we always gravitate towards the tour guides, the tour managers who have that frontal view to the, to the client, to the customer. They are the people that are going to get, they're the stars that are going to get that repeat business back for people. And that's the golden nugget right there. <sighs> Yeah, it's so true, and so many people overlook that. Those frontline people are the face and of of your business, and um, who better to en enroll and engage and encourage those people to get involved with the social media, to tell their friends, to get to do, to generate the referrals, the repeat business. Uh, they are the face, and, and uh, I think that if you're not spending time uh, educating and training your staff on a regular basis, you're 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 missing, as you say, a golden opportunity. Absolutely, and putting them in the on the pedestal that they deserve to be on, Definitely. making them the stars, uh, because people want to know where Joe is going to be at, because they want to follow Joe, because they had such a great time with Joe last time. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of thing. The other thing I want to just mention briefly is what Orlando has done in the Great Barrier Reef, and that is they've done some great, great, um, uh, getting great visibility by doing these wonderful promotions uh, by attracting, for example, Orlando, the 60. 62 Days of Smiles. They went out and got two young people, interviewed a lot of people, made that a huge campaign. Didn't cost them a whole lot. But what they did then, they chose two people, made them into stars, and then they gave them 62 days of experiences in Orlando. And we followed along with that. They blogged. And now they're doing another you know, continuation after that. The Great Barrier Reef did the same thing. They went and called out for a one person to come in, spend six months to blog, write, and take care of one of the islands. They got $100,000 for doing it, and it co that, was the, that was the extent of what it cost. Brilliant. This. And it lived on for a full year. Brilliant, brilliant. It's, it's, it's reality. It's our tourism's versions of, of, of reality TV. And it is. It's great. It's and great. It, is, it is perfect. Well, let's, let's look at some trends that, it, that, that you're seeing as the, in the forefront as the, as the princess of tourism, of, of good global ambassador to travel, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in tourism now and, and into the future? Well, you know, we concentrate a lot in Africa, Middle East, China. We love emerging countries. I think that they are the, 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 the little sweet uh, jewels of the travel industry. So we like going there. But I would say the trends right now are offering more than just if it's Tuesday, it's Belgium. It's more about what does that traveler want to experience? And many, many times they want to, what we call pay it forward, do a little volunteerism. So we're seeing a lot of those kinds of packages put together. For example, you might have a five-day safari, but at the end of that safari, you might have a three-day giving back mm. in the village. So you're finding a lot of tour operators are offering, the, the big guys too, the big guys are offering that too. So you're going to see a lot of different uh products out there and I think that that's really the, the the thing that is important is to think outside the box what are people wanting to do and people do want to give back and you're going to find out and, and, and I'm sure uh, people who've been to Africa they probably hands down 80% would probably say I wish I knew or I wish I had a couple extra days. I would have loved to stay mm. and maybe paid a little more attention into the orphanages or given back into the schools or done something in the, the water district or whatever it is that, you know, you, you have some kind of skill set for. Boy, that, that is, I, I couldn't agree with you more. We are the, on the leading edge of introducing our guests to these new areas. And when we facilitate that sort of volunteerism, that giving back, we're, we're, we're helping the, our very community uh, that we want to support, and we're diversifying that, that cultural immersion, getting to know each other, and what's neat about it, through social media, word of mouth, 
that volunteerism, that giving forward that maybe you facilitated as a tour operator, now and, and touch the lives of two people, they're going to go back and tell their friends and who may get involved. And, and I've seen this be the start of, a, of a, perhaps a, a lifelong commitment to that exactly. new charity. And exactly. there we're making a huge difference. Exactly. So many people come back and start their own nonprofits, and I've seen it time and time and time again. So it, it, there's something very, very valuable about that aspect of it, too. So not only are we making a difference in other in, in the communities we serve, but as you pointed out, it's good business. This helps, uh, helps set you apart, and I think that that's key. And it's not that difficult at all to set that up. And, and I doubt a community or organization or nonprofit would 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 have any aversions to having you bring guests there to participate, to volunteer, or give money. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's fabulous. It's easy. It, it is. The other aspect is that the, the, the greenology of our world and how we project being green. And I would just say that to be very careful about that, uh, we have a lot of faux green out yes. there. And the most important thing is to really walk the talk and Really, that part of your credibility is really going to be looked at there. If you're green, you've got to be really green. Yeah, good point. Good point. Well, that, that's a good segue into um, when you're doing things, that any challenges that are showing up out in the marketplace. Because, um, uh, uh, as you say, there's people who are putting green on their marketing or their branding and not really walking the talk. Um, any other challenges that you're seeing globally in the tourism industry that that uh, people should be aware of um, uh, or they should have really avoid? Well, certainly, you know, we have all kinds of noise out there as far as news and media companies, bloggers or journalists. I mean, we're just, we're filled to the max with with news information. I mean, we can't walk a, a, a foot uh, without getting some kind of uh, uh, information. So I would say that uh, it's very important to do your homework. And certainly, I believe that that's why the tour operator has to be in a networking uh, situation where they have a lot of people in their pockets that they can go and know they can rely on. So um, I would say that it's really important building your business that you do make those contacts with people that can actually make a difference to you outside your region because like I said there's a lot of noise out there um, I've got some recommendations for some great great books um, I just did an interview with a, a woman named um, Anita Mandarata. She's out of South Africa. She's on the CNN Tourism and Travel Task Force. Uh, she just wrote a book called, called "Come Closer," and it's up for a um, it's up for a, a number one uh, 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 book uh, title this year. This is the uh, nice. actual um, book. It's a beautiful um, book cover showing the differences in cultures by just the handshake. Mm. And she goes through, and I, you can see I, I, I really love this book, but, but the important thing about this book is she takes you through all of the aspects of not only um, uh, running a business, but what tourism and travel, what the benefits, what, what they do to the rest of the world, what is the, the process of interacting with tourism and uh, professionals, uh, with your role as a tour operator, how do you work with the ministries, how do you work with governments. So she really does do a great, great job. Outstanding. Well, I'll, I'll uh, look forward to reading that book myself. Thanks for I'll the recommendation. You. Thank you. And I'll make sure that we link in on the show notes uh, for this. That's excellent. Um, speaking of connecting with each other, and I love that that symbol of holding hands because it, it's it's really, that's how simple and, and powerful it is. There's a, lo uh, a lot of um, uh, foreign, uh, we're both in the United States, there's a lot of, and this is a great market for um, uh, tour operators and lodges and destinations in South, you know, that are in South America, Africa, um, Asia, who would really like more North American clients. I get it, emails all the time from operators and destinations and hoteliers saying, you know, I would like to connect with, you know, are you a travel agent? Can you send me some clients? Are you a tour operator? Can you send me some clients? And um, so from your perspective, what advice do you have for that foreign destination that would like more North American tourists? How can they position themselves to create those relationships um, that are going to um, be win-win and help uh, funnel more of those clients your, their way. 
Well, there's no doubt about it. You have to walk the talk. You have to get in front of people. And certainly, uh, we do a really good job in the United States. The uh, the Tourism Industry uh, Association, ro- headed out by Roger Dow, they were just here in San Francisco, by the way, for their yearly what they call powwow. Powwow is an outstanding opportunity for outside folks to come on in to the United States, show their wares, and also vice versa. So it's a great opportunity to do that dance with the North American operators and services so that you can see what's being offered and how you can get into that mix. There's real no shortcut in the fact that you have to uh, be dedicated, determined, and you have to continue to network. So it's very important to find the different kinds of of, um, of shows, of educational venues that that can actually help you do this. Um, there's there's an institute up here in San Francisco, and it's really uh, interesting that we're here and the institute is here because it is really one of the the leading industries in the world for tourism, um, and it, it has to do with uh, uh, tour management. It's called the International Tour Management Institute, mm-hmm. and they have you heard of them, Tim? They I have. Yeah, uh, Ted Bravo, he brought this, he founded this 30 years ago. They have a symposium that they do every January. And last year it was in Atlanta. I went to it. It was spectacular. And what tour operators do there is they come in and they, they actually hire their new tour guides. But it's also a robust area to exchange information and to share what is going on in the world. So Mm. the ITMI, and we can also get that link up there too, they do a a superb job in not only training tour operators, or excuse me, tour directors and tour managers, but they also help in guiding these tour directors after they graduate and getting them jobs around the world. So there's a great, beautiful network there too. So you have to unpeel this onion and stay abreast of it. And I would say, stay close to you. Stay close to me. We can, we have our fingers in all of these little pies. Excellent resources. And, and the value of meeting people face-to-face, mm. um, it creates those relationships. It's where the hands, where you can touch hands, where you can meet and connect and really realize that we're all in this together. We're the same. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet. We all have the same issues, the same dreams, the same passion, and we're all here to help each other. So that's great. I think, I think one of the most wonderful things about traveling is to go to a different culture that seems maybe so different than yours, but you look and you see a family interact the very same way you do, with mm. love and, and support and caring, and you realize we are really all the same. Definitely, definitely. Well, that on that note, that's a great uh, time to wrap up this segment for the tour operators, and uh, stay tuned for the next chapter of Tourism Marketing TV, where we're going to look at if you're thinking, if you're in the uh, the tourism business as a career, or you're thinking about getting into this wonderful hospitality global industry, uh, Sandy and myself are going to talk about some tips and, and tools to help you uh, make a living, uh, have an outstanding career doing what you love. Sandy, thank you so much. You bet, Tim. Thank you. Take care.